confusing you, man. It's confusing. I'm going to try to get this right today. I just got three changes just now. <laughs> uh, refuel uh, every Wednesday at 7 p.m. If you've never been to that, it's a Bible study. You can participate as much as you want, or you can just sit there and listen. Uh, we need chairs for the new building. The cost of each chair is $50. If you're able to sponsor one or more chairs, please use an envelope and write the word chair on it, or you can donate online and put chair in the memo line. All donations are tax deductible and depreciated. In the handouts is a connection card. If you haven't filled one of those out yet, please do that and put it in the boot. The movie night for Friday has been canceled. Saturday, May 20th at 2 p.m. is Tim and Kristen's wedding. There's a sign up sheet for food donations out for that. Sunday, May 28th, is our monthly scheduled ride and lunch. And for more information and more events, uh, check out the Facebook page. There's a calendar on there. And uh, Natalie wants to come up and say something. So happy Mother's Day to all our moms. And we have moms here who might not actually have biological children, but maybe your moms to other young ladies, young men in the church. Maybe you're a mom to your husband's kids. Maybe you have stepkids. Maybe you have fur babies. But we have a special gift for every woman, every lady, grown woman that's here today. And you have to be here today to receive it. That's your thank you for being in attendance today, Sunday. So we have Jen and Becky. They're going to give each lady a pink ticket. You must cash the ticket in today to get the free gift. Does everyone understand that? Okay, so I want to show you what your options are. You have two options. First one is a Freedom Biker Church stainless steel travel mug. Okay. Now I have to set the mic down to show you the second gift, but how many of you went on the trip to Maggie Valley? Do you remember how cold and miserable and rainy it was? Okay, I'm going to show you how you can prepare. Or one of these, your choice. Thanks, Natalie. Make sure you get your tickets now. <laughs> so, good morning, Freedom Biker Church. How y'all doing? Uh, I've been better. <laughs> um, trip was good. Uh, a lot of people went on that trip. I heard that things went great here uh, last week. And Gary always does a good job. Appreciate him filling in for me, wherever he is. There he is right in front of me, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, the, 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 the trip was, I'm still stuttering. It was great. But the last 100 miles was pouring down rain. And uh, we couldn't see, and I was just following the flashers in front of me, and that was all I needed, I guess. But, uh, man, it was miserable, I'll tell you. Rained a little bit on Friday, rained a little bit on Saturday. Sunday and Monday were beautiful, and appreciate uh, Bill putting that, putting that together and keeping us safe on the way down and on the way back. And I know, I know there were a lot of others that contributed to that, and we appreciate all the, all the stuff that you did for that. Next year... Um, we're done. We're not doing that anymore. Forget it. <laughs> now, next year, we're planning on going to Mississippi for the, uh, for the gathering, so we'll see. <laughs> All right. Um, I, uh, I am not feeling well, so this may be short today. And everybody's like, hallelujah, man. <laughs> Get to the restaurant early. Everything would be great. 
Um, but yeah, I, I, I just asked for your prayers this morning as I try to make it through this and uh, without too much pain. So let's pray, shall we? Lord, we come before you and, and God, we, uh, we want nothing but you. God, we don't want we don't want any credit. John Willis doesn't want any credit. And I know the band doesn't want any credit. And uh, all we want to do, God, is give you the honor and the praise and the thanks for what you've done for us. Lord, we thank you for our mothers and uh, God for the, the, the ladies that have been an influence in our lives. Help us to honor them today and help us uh, to learn more today about what you want for them. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so... Um, it's Mother's Day, right? How many of you are? This is this is my always, this is my Mother's Day thing. How many of you are a mother, or, have you, or you've had a mother? Okay, most of you. Okay, um, Happy Mother's Day then. Those of you that don't ever have, you've never had a mother. I'm sorry. We'll try to we'll try to we'll, we'll try to you know appoint one to you later on, maybe if you need one. Some of you I know need some motherly guidance. And uh, that's what we're that's what we're going to talk about today. The title is uh, the love of a mother. How can a, how can a mother have a spiritual impact on her children? So, um, by the time a child reaches the age of eighteen, a mother has to handle they say some eighteen thousand hours of child generated work. That's a lot of work. Um, you know that's that's like I think forty two days a year that. Uh, that of work that a mother does just for, for for one child probably. If you have more than one child, um, then it's more than that. If you have, I hear if you have three or more, it just doesn't make it. Do, it doesn't matter after that. So, those of you that have more than more than that, you're like, yeah, forget it. Uh, a junior high science teacher was lecturing on the properties of magnets for this class. The next day, his student he gave his students a quiz. The first question read like this. My name begins with an M, has six letters, and I pick things up. What am I? Half of the kids in the class wrote mother. <laughs> Wasn't the right answer, but I'm sure it is in some cases. Uh, there, was a, there was a father who, whose four-year-old daughter was asking about marriage, asking about you know, what, what, what that's all about. And so he gets out the wedding album and he starts showing her the pictures and you know, thinking the visual images would help and trying to maybe give her a picture of, of what, uh, what goes on. And uh, he explained it to her as, as the pictures went through. When he was finished, he asked if she had any questions, and she pointed to a picture of the wedding party and asked, Daddy, is that when Mommy came to work for us? And all the mothers said, yeah, that's what I figured. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> there are pictures of mother, mothers in the Bible over and over again, the mother of Moses, who cared, who cared for her son so much that she broke the law to teach him the faith of his people. We see the sacrificial love of the mother who appeared before King Solomon and told him that she was willing to have her son taken away by another woman rather than see harm come to him. The mother of James and John, who loved her boys so much that she wanted them to sit by the Lord's side in the heavenly kingdom. The mother of King Lemuel, who gave some advice to her son about godly living and how to pick a good wife in Proverbs chapter 31. Today, I am not going to camp out at Proverbs 31, although it's a good chapter. Maybe we'll do that next year. And I'm also aware that some of you, for some of you, this may be a difficult day for you. Uh, maybe, um, maybe you wanted to be a mother and couldn't for some reason, and, I, and I'm sorry for that. Maybe you didn't have the best mother in the world, and that's, uh, that's tragic as well. Some of you had a mother who has passed on. Some of you are mothers who have lost a child, which is extremely, extremely painful. Some of you uh, feel the pain of, of a wayward child. Some of you are flying solo and trying to raise your children to nurture your child's faith. So this morning, as we talk about these things, I kind of want to focus on this. A mother can make a significant spiritual impact on her children with or without the help of a father. Now, there, there are shows on television that I shake my head at constantly, but uh, it, 
the question I always have, and, and I'm going to pick on the fathers here uh, for a moment, but as I see people bring their children on TV that have problems and all these insane things that happen, my question is, where are the fathers, you know? Because most of the time when those shows are on, the father isn't there, and that's, that's sad. That's tragic. And I think that's what, I really think that's a great part of what's wrong with our society. But I want to tell you, moms, if you're raising your kids by yourself, you can do it without the help of a man, okay? God can give you strength. God can be that father for them. You can influence them in a greater way than some men could. And that's, that's sad, but I want you to be encouraged by that, okay? So in the Bible, in First and Second Timothy, we're going to look at a few of the, the, the words that are in there. But I want you to know that there was a young man, a young woman named Eunice, and she raised, she was raised in a, in a I say religious home, but a spirit, a home of spirituality, a home that was impacted greatly by her mother, and her mother's name was Lois. Uh, she learned the stories of the Bible, and at a young age, at young age, she, um, it, it was known that her mom Lois would teach her the stories of the Bible. She loved those stories when she was young. In her teenage years, when things seemed to matter the most, those spiritual matters are what attracted her to a young man that was not very spiritual at all. Again, going against the best wishes of a godly mother, the teaching of her faith, um, God tugging at her heart, she married the man anyway. Don't, don't get me wrong, he was a nice guy and um, he just thought spiritual matter, matters were f for people that are weak. After a couple of years, Eunice and her husband had a baby boy, and they named that baby boy Timmy. In the meantime, Eunice's dad passed away. Uh, at this time, they asked Lois, the mother-in-law, the mother of Eunice, to move in with them as is custom to their society. Little Timmy uh, was a delight to everyone. Both his mother and grandma grandmother spent hours with him teaching him the stories of the Old Testament, teaching him right from wrong, praying for him, training him in the things of the way God would want him to go. And back in this day, they didn't have veggie tales. They didn't have Sunday school. They just had mom and grandma to create a spiritual environment where Timmy could flourish. So one day there was a preacher who named, whose name was Paul, came to their town and spoke about a man named Jesus. Lois and Eunice listened, listened intently. They saw in Jesus the fulfillment of the promises of the Old Testament. They placed their trust in him, and they converted to Christianity. These new believers focused on uh, these teachings for Timothy and tried to tell him about all that Jesus was. We know from reading uh, the book of Acts that Paul himself took a personal interest and Timmy, as a teenager, partnered with his mother and grandmother and led him to saving faith. Later, Paul and Timothy partnered together in ministry, and the gospel spread throughout the area. Many years later, while Paul was in prison, awaiting his execution, he wrote two letters to young Timothy, and these letters contain some of the teachings about how Timothy should be, uh, as a, uh, behave, how they should behave as a church, how he should be as a church leader, being so young. We know them now as First and Second Timothy in the New Testament. With that as a background, I want to draw from some things that were said in Timothy and some other parts of the Bible to show you that a mother and a grandmother can have a spiritual sig significance in a child's life with or without the help of a father. So as we think about those things, I want to turn your attention to the outline that's in your handout to number one. Number one, what can I do? What can you do as a mother with or without the help of a man to help your children spiritually? And if you're not a mother, then how can you help others grow spiritually? Because you do have an influence on others. As a grandmother, how can you help your grandchildren have a spiritual, a deep spiritual life with God? Number one, I see that what these two did and what you can do is help them love God's word. Help them love God's word. 
In 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 14, it says, But you must remain faithful to the things you have been taught. You know they are true, for you know you can trust those who taught you. Now, Paul is writing this to who? We've already discovered Timothy. Little, little Timmy, right? That's a they probably call him. Little Timmy. So he writes this to little Timmy and tells him, remember what you've been taught because those who taught you taught you the truth, right? And as I've described a little bit here in this little story beforehand, who were the ones that were teaching Timmy all along? His mother and his grandmother, right? So here we see a young man, a young preacher, a young Christian adult who's trying to be trying to do things right in his life, who's trying to be an influence in his society. And Paul tells him, remember what your mom and your grandmom taught you, right? Now, we, we know how it is. Usually, dad teaches them how to play football and how to play baseball and how to play basketball. And they go through high school and they play and they get to college and they play and they get on TV. And what do they do? They get on the camera and they go, hi, mom, right? Dad's like, what about me? I'm the one that taught him how to play football. But it's high mom. Why? Because moms have a spiritual influence. Because moms and grandmoms have an influence on young people that goes beyond what anything you can possibly imagine. You think you were given those instincts as mama bear by accident? No. You were sent by God as a protector and a nurturer for your children. And I don't care... How late you think it is in the game, it's never too late to be a spiritual influence on your children, right? So, in uh, the next verse here, do I have another verse? John 8, 36. Is that what it is? No, it's not. Quit messing with me, Schaefer. I'm not feeling good up here. Huh. Well, I'm sure somebody will look that up and correct me later. <laughs> I blame it on the medicine I'm taking. All right. I don't know where this verse is, but we'll find it. All right. Listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Oh, this is in, I think, Leviticus. All right. Uh, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your what? Strength, and you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I'm giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you're on the road, when you're going to bed, and when you're getting up. That pretty much covers it all, doesn't it? The Bible says very clearly, it's an old, I believe this is in Leviticus, and we'll find it, I'm sure, shortly. But I was close, Deuteronomy 6 1. Uh, huh? 6 4, okay. Just go to Deuteronomy 6 and look for it, right? Um, yeah, the whole thing's good. But here, I believe Lois and, and Eunice took these words to heart. And they trained little Timmy as they were going throughout their day, as they were going throughout their house, as they were out on the road doing something. When they were putting him to bed, when they were getting him up, they were constantly talking to him about God's word and constantly influencing him with God's word. I know it's Kathy and I. Is she in here? Did she? Is she back with the children? Oh, there she is. Hi, honey. Um, and uh, I, I know with us, with our kids, it was constantly. Yeah, I'm talking about you guys back there. It was constantly. We were, you know, whether it didn't matter if we were watching a television show or whether we were driving somewhere or teaching them something or when they were going to bed, whatever it was. Everything in life relates to the Bible, right? Everything that you go through relates to the, There's something in the Bible that has to say about everything in life. So as you're going through your day, as you're going through your day, and, and some of you are probably like, well, yeah, but I'm, I'm not one of them preachers or preacher's wives that have the Bible all memorized and we can just spout it off and know the whole thing. Don't be fooled. I don't know everything there is about the Bible, okay? That's, I know that shocks some of you. <gasps> I, I just went from here to here on some of you in, in your eyes, I know. But there's no possible way I could know everything that's in this book randomly in my head. I have to look things up. I, ha I, have, I have some sort of brain damage <laughs> that, that keeps me from remembering things sometimes. You know, it's called 
they call it CRS. I say, can't remember stuff, right? Just clean that up a little bit. Uh, and I, and I, know, I know I drive a lot of people crazy with that. What are you doing back there? Pay attention. I know I drive my wife crazy. Yeah. Uh, with, with, with that kind of stuff. I, I, it's one of those things that my brain doesn't function like a normal human beings. And I know that a lot of you can associate with that because you're in the same boat I am. Uh, too many times, get hit, hit in the head too many times and all those stupid things you've done as a, as a kid and as a young adult. But uh, uh, God's word can help you to remember the things that you need to remember. God can help you and bring things to mind. But one of the things you have to do is you have to put it in there. You know, He's not, It's not going to happen by osmosis. I know some of you think if you sleep with a Bible on your head, that it'll get in there somehow. It doesn't. You've got to read it. You've got to study it. You've got to start to know it. And even if you have a bad memory, God will bring those things back to mind when you need them. And that's what Lois and Eunice did. They talked to Timmy about these things. Mothers, it's never too early to start teaching your children the Bible. It's never too late to teach your children the Bible. I don't care if, if they're 50 and you're however, however young you are. It's never too late to influence them with God's Word. Amen? No doubt, right? And it doesn't have to be you know, well, son, while I got you here, I know it's Mother's Day, and you're, this is the only time I see you during the year. We're, we're going to read the book of Proverbs today. Um, that's not necessarily what's going to do it, is it? No. The influence that I'm talking about is, is allowing your child to see God's Word modeled through you. And some of you, I know you're going, I don't model that too well. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not doing too good on those things. I've still got a long way to go. There's little things. You know, God doesn't require you to do the whole thing in one day, right? He just wants you to take the thing that you have learned and start applying it to your life. So the things that you know to do right, start doing them now. The thing that you did read in the Bible today, start applying that now. And let, let, your, let your kids, no matter how old they are or how young they are, start seeing you model those things in your life. That's the Bible that people are going to read, Right? It's the one that's modeled through you, the one that they see living, at, living through you. That takes me to number two. Show them real faith in action. Show them real faith in action. 2 Timothy 1.5, and this is kind of what we're all about with Freedom Biker Church. It's about doing it. It's not just about reading it or knowing it. It's about doing it, right? Every week, one of the cool things, um, uh, Friday night, Mike Beasley and, and uh, Charlene, they're the, he's the pastor of the home office church. They were passing through, and I got to meet them up in the new building. They wanted to see it while they were passing through, so I got to, got to show them the building, and they, they were blown away. They're like, man, this is awesome. This is, God's going to do some great things here. And, uh, and it's coming together. You know, uh, Everybody's doing some, some hard work on it, and hopefully in a month or so we'll, we'll, we'll get in there. Um, but it's not about, and this is where I think all churches kind of go wrong. It's not about... Get in a building so that you can pack people in there so that you can say you had an X amount of people on Sunday, right? Now, do we count how many people are here? Yes. You need to, you need to measure how things are going. You need to see how, how you're using your space and all those things. But the main thing is that you're going out from here and doing something with the things that you're learning, right? So every, every week, it seems that there's 20, 30, 40, sometimes people missing from church on Sunday morning. Do you realize that? I mean, you look around and you see there are people that weren't here last week or that uh, whatever. But there are bike events that are taking place today. There are other things going on today other than church. And I tell people, if you can minister outside of these walls on a Sunday morning, it's not about sitting your butt in a chair and sitting there listening to me. That's not what this is about. This is about taking what you've learned and going out there and do it. Now, that doesn't mean all 150 of you or whatever here today, you don't come next Sunday. <laughs> but it's about if you, if you have an opportunity to go to a to go to an event, man, put your Freedom Biker Church shirt on, your Freedom Biker Church hat on or whatever, and go out there and, and be an influence in people's lives. Go out there and hand somebody a sticker and pray, tell them to pray for them and pray over their bike. 
oh, I'm not a preacher. I can't do that. It doesn't matter, man. You know how to pray? Just pray. Oh, I don't know how to pray. Yeah, you do. You know how to talk to somebody, don't you? You know how to talk to people in your household or know how to talk to your friends. That's all you're doing when you're praying to God is, is talking to them like you're his friend, right? It's simple. It's not really difficult. Or just go out. And it's one of the easiest things to do is just invite somebody to come, to come to church or come to one of our events. I mean, how many, I, I can't tell you how many times I hear every week, if I could just get so-and-so here. I know I, I, they, they love it and they, they wouldn't want to leave. And that's what happens, as you guys have told me, right? Right? Okay, good, yeah. I thought so. Fall asleep on me. I'll start over if you want me to. No? Okay. But it, it's easy just to say, hey, come hang out with us, man. 10 o'clock, we start having hangout time. 10.15, we go outside, have prayer. 10.33, we start the service, and it's all about rock and roll and Jesus, right? That's all it is. Show them faith in action. Did I read 2 Timothy 1, 5 yet? I should have. I remember your genuine faith, for you share the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and your mother. Eunice, and I know that same faith continues strong in you. Show them that faith in action. You know, they could have taken little Timmy to Sunday school, right? They didn't have Sunday school back then, I don't think. Uh, they could have taken him to Sunday school or church or whatever and had him learn. They could have taken him to, you know, uh, uh, Chopper Church or whatever. They, they could have even talked to him about the Bible. But he's not going to see it. He's not going to believe it. And he's not going to do it unless he's seeing it modeled, unless he's seeing his mother and grandmother do the things that they're talking about, right? It's about following up. It's about putting faith in action. It's about doing what you're saying you're going to do, because otherwise you're what? You're a hypocrite, right? That's one of the main reasons I think that people don't want to know anything more about God or anything about Jesus is because of hypocrites. That's the biggest excuse anyway, isn't it, that we find, right? That's what I hear. So we've got to model it. We've got to show people. And does that mean we're going to be perfect every minute, every, every moment of every day? No, you're not. First John tells us, if you say that you have no sin, you're only deceiving yourselves. So, but, but we've got to put that faith in action. We've got to show, this is what I learned. This is what I know. This is what I'm telling other people to do. So I better do it myself, right? So we really lost. Okay. I said all this stuff. Where's the rest of my notes? Here we go. Number three. No, we got another verse, right? Acts 12, 12. When he realized this, he went to the home of Mary, the mother of John Mark, where many were gathered for prayer. Here, Mary, the mother of Jesus, models it in front of not, not only in front of God, but everybody else, in front of her kids. She went to prayer meeting. She thought it was important enough to go meet with others to pray. She thought it was important enough to pray for her kids. If nothing else, today, mom, start praying for your kids. Mom, grandma, start praying for your grandkids. I don't have to stand here and tell you that the world is screwed up, right? And that this world is, is dangerous and messed up. More than ever, our kids need prayer, man. If you don't have kids, if you don't have grandkids, adopt somebody as, as your own and tell them, just, I, I, I dare you. I dare you to go to some other mom and go, I want to pray for your kids this week. Do you know what that would do to that mother? Right? Right, moms? That would melt your heart, wouldn't it? Anybody that would pray for my kids, wow, that would be the most awesome thing that you could do for that person. If you don't have kids, if you don't have grandkids, find, find somebody else and say, you know what, I want, to, I want to pray for your kids. How can I pray for you and your kids this week? Pow, man, you would have a friend for life right there, wouldn't you? Just pray for them. Number three, encourage them to have a servant's heart. Encourage them to have a servant's heart. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 14, it says, They all met together and were constantly united in prayer, along with Mary, the mother of Jesus, several other women, and the brothers of Jesus. Here we are again, Mary... Mary goes to prayer meeting, right? Goes to pray. And her kids see that she's going to pray. And she models that for them. And she shows them what it means to be a servant of God. You know, she could have just said, well, watch your brother Jesus to the other, to the other ones, right? To, 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 to 
James and John and everybody. She said, well, just, just watch Jesus and do what he does. <laughs> but she did. She did it herself. She modeled it herself. She encouraged every one of her kids to be a servant of Jesus Christ. There are three qualities that we see that Timothy's mother and grandmother passed down to them, and I'm sure if we looked into Mary's life, we could probably pull examples of that as well. But three things that, that no doubt were passed down to Timothy from his mom and grandma. First of all, he was a strong believer. He was a strong believer. He's referred to as a disciple. Luke, the author of Acts, could have referred to him as a believer or a Christian, but he chose to call him a disciple. A disciple is a learner and a follower. A disciple is one who is serious about serving Jesus Christ, not one who's just going through the motions. And we've talked about before, many other times before, that if you model authentic relationships with God, if you, if you, if you model authentic faith, it's going to spread because people are going to see it and they're going to go, you know what? I don't know what they got, but I want it too. That's what's going to happen when you start modeling these things in front of others, when you develop a servant's heart, when you teach your kids how to have a servant's heart. Number two, the second thing that Lois and Eunice did for Timothy was, or the second thing that Timothy had as a result of, it's the medication, sorry. The second thing Timothy had as a result of his mother and grandmother modeling these things in front of him was a good reputation. A good reputation is something that goes miles and miles because it doesn't it doesn't take a whole lot for somebody to start talking about somebody and ruin their reputation for people to, to start discrediting that person or stop listening to that person or go you know i'm really not sure about that person after what i heard you follow me timothy had a good reputation the believers in the area where he was from spoke well of him people knew him as a man of integrity and a man of the word of god he was a, he was rock solid Again, this has a lot to do with his mother and his grandmother and the influence that they had on him. Third, third thing that Timothy was is he was available. He was a strong believer. He had a good reputation, and he was available. Paul wanted to take him along on the journey with him. And as you read the book of Acts, you'll see that Timothy was eager to minister. He knew it meant leaving home. He knew it meant facing hardship. He knew it meant sacrificing friendships and many other things. But there's no other way that... He could have had this kind of commitment to ministry if he had not been encouraged at home. How many of you know who uh, Susanna Wesley was? Anybody ever hear of John Wesley? Okay, it was his John and Charles Wesley mother, right? John and Charles Wesley were pretty much, the, along with uh, George Whitfield, probably were founders of the Methodist uh, denomination. So they were pretty influential, influential guys. They preached and preached and preached, and people listened and got saved and started a whole denomination as a result of their preaching, preached revivals throughout uh, England and throughout the United States. So Susanna Wesley, their mother, is credited with, credited with having a great influence on her children, John and Charles. Makes sense, right? Okay. Susanna Wesley, she not only had John and Charles, anybody know how many kids she had? She would have been right up there with the Duggars almost, and whoever else it is. 17. 17 kids, two of them, John and Charles. She spent an hour each day praying for her children. She's got 17 kids, all right? And she takes an hour out of her day to pray for her kids. And some of you are looking at me cross-eyed like, how do you do that when you have 17 kids? Praying for them. In addition, she took each child aside for one hour each week to discuss spiritual matters. So 17 hours during the week plus seven hours for one hour for each day. So that's 24 hours so far that she spent praying for her kids and instructing her kids with, with God's word. So no wonder her children were used by God to be a blessing through England and America. Here's some things that uh, I came across, parenting guidelines that helped her as a mother. You ready for these? If you don't write them down, I can give you a copy later. Subdue self-will and a child and thus work together with God to save the soul. I don't see that much anymore, do you? Subdue self-will in a child and thus work together with God to save his soul. Number two, teach the child to pray as soon as he can speak. Teach the child to pray as soon as he or she can speak. Now, we have Chopper Church, and we try to instruct these kids 
And what little time we have, we'll even give it a whole hour. Say we are, say, say they're in there an hour with the teacher, right? They probably get about 10 minutes of knowledge put in their heads by the time they sit down and quit wiggling. I don't know where I get that idea. How we doing? <laughs> Because uh, kids wiggle, right? There's one, Howard Hendricks was the teacher of teachers. He's, he was a, a, a great teacher. And he said, the problem that we have in our churches is we're telling the kids to sit down and be still and the Holy Spirit's going to wiggle. <laughs> but that's, it's, in, it's in a child, you know? They got to wiggle. They got to move. They got to do something. So let's say we spend an hour with the kids back here. That hour will never take hold or take root in that child unless it's being backed up at home. Because in the home is where it's going to count. In the home is what's going to influence them and impact them. Moms, you are going to be a huge influence in your home for your children. Way more than, all, all, all we're doing is reinforcing, hopefully, what you're teaching them at home. That's all that's supposed to be for. It's not up to, the, it's not up to us to make sure that these kids go out of here discipled. It's impossible to do that with just a little bit of time that we have each week. You got, it's just got to be a reinforcement of what you're already doing. So teach the child to pray as soon as he can speak. Number three, give the child nothing he cries for and only what is good for him if he asks politely. That flies in the face of everything in our society, doesn't it? Let me read that again. Give the child nothing he cries for. Have you been to a grocery store lately? <laughs> Give the child nothing he cries for and only what is good for him if he asks for it politely. How would, that was not going to work in this society. It will if you enforce it. If you're consistent, you will if you, if you quit going, stop, or I'll say stop again. <laughs> My kids will, <laughs> will tell you, all I had to do was give you the look, right? I have a hard time now because I got that Botox for migraines. And I can't move my eyebrows. But uh, <laughs> it tries to be crazy, man. I got to stop that. But uh, it was either that or if they were really misbehaving, I'd go like this, right? And I wasn't counting the three. That's how many you're getting now. <laughs> you're already getting one. You want to go for two? <laughs> we can go have a little visit in the car or out the, in the bathroom. I didn't abuse them. Okay, they're all right. They're fine. They still love Jesus. One of, my, one of my most favorite verses, though, is in, in, the, in the Proverbs. The folly is bound within the heart of a child, but the rod of correction will drive it far from him. Right? <laughs> yeah, they're good kids. Give them nothing they cry for and only give them what is good for him if he asks for it politely. I like that. To prevent lying, punish no fault, which is freely confessed but never allow a rebellious, sinful act to go unnoticed. You hear that? If they confess it, give them some grace, right? It's when they had that on street going. We know what that's like. Uh, the next one, commend and reward good behavior. Seems like a simple thing, but not done so often. And then the last one, strictly observe all promises you have made to your child. Follow through, man. That's one of the most important things as a parent. Follow through. If you say you're going to do something, do it. I don't know how many times <laughs> Tyler, he, he's got way too good of a memory. And he would come to me, hey, Dad, remember you said you were going to do this? I'm like, when did I say that? And Kathy's like, yeah, it's what you told him. All right, I better do it then. And that goes for the punishment as well, right? If you say no, and this is why, and this is what's going to happen if you do it, follow through. That's why you can't say anything. If you do that, I'm going to rip your arm off and shove it down your throat. You can't say that. Because you can't follow through. <laughs> I hope. But John and Charles Wesley, some of the greatest preachers that ever lived on the face of this earth. There's a reason why. Because they had a mother that prayed for them. Had a mother that trained them. Taught them. Had a mother that followed through, did what she said she was going to do. I, remember I heard stories, many stories before about uh, women like this. And I think it was Susanna Wesley. She would pull, take, sit down when it, when it was prayer time. She would sit down in a chair in the living room, take her apron and put it up over her head. The kids knew not to mess with her because that was her prayer time. She's talking to God. 
You might not have an apron. You might not want to put it over your head. But you could do something. You could go somewhere and pray. And if the kids know that that's your time with you and God, they'll learn to respect that. But you've got to follow through. Titus chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. Do I have this one? Yep. These older women, now I, know, I know none of you in here are older women. You're all younger women, right? Okay. But those of you who are more mature will say, must train the younger women to love their husbands and their children, to live wisely and be pure, to work in their homes, to do good, and to be submissive to their husbands. Oh, ho, 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 what? Now, I've explained this, and I'm going to explain it two times on Saturday because i got two weddings to do. That, yes, the Bible does say women submit to your husbands. <gasps> I know it's not very popular these days, but submission doesn't mean you're walking ten steps behind, kowtowing to him, just obeying every woman command that he puts out there. God is going to hold the man responsible for what takes place in his household. Right, guys? So if you're going to be held responsible and God's going to ask you, and he's going to judge you according to these things, then you better take your job very seriously. And ladies, what it comes down to, and see verses, the other verses that say both of you should, both of you, I can't get the words out, man. Both of you should submit to each other, right? Both of you take each other into consideration on things. That doesn't mean that the man just goes off and does what he wants to. The Bible says the man should love his wife like Christ loved the church, and Christ loved the church so much that he died for it. That's how much we should love our wives, guys. That's how much we should love our families. That's what you should love your mothers. But I was going somewhere with this, wasn't I? Submit, yeah. Uh, this is what it comes down to. When, when the decision's got to be made at home, ladies, all you got to do is duck and let God hit him. It's his responsibility, right? Men, be men. Stand up and do what's right. <clears throat> Ladies, whew, be an influence on your kids. Be an influence on somebody else's kids. It's the best thing you could ever do. One more verse in Proverbs 31, 28. I said I wasn't going to do the whole chapter, but I got one verse for you. Her children arise and call her blessed. That's a good thing, isn't it? So what I want you to do is I want all the moms to stay seated. And I want everybody else to rise. If you're not a mom, stand up. Okay? And I want, I, those of you that are standing up, I want you to turn around and look at these moms. I want, I want you to say, you are blessed. You are blessed. Okay? Children arise and call her blessed. That means we, we're all children, right? We all, we all have parents. We're all children of somebody. So make sure we call these, these ladies blessed, all right? Everybody, everybody stand, okay, would you? Let's pray together. Father, we love you and we thank you for what you're doing in our hearts and lives and with Freedom Biker Church, not just here, but all across the country. God, I pray right now that you would let these words soak into our hearts, not the words of John Willis, but the words that came from you. God, may you not let us rest until we do call these ladies blessed, until we treat them as they are blessed. God, help these moms. Give them strength, Lord. Give them strength and wisdom beyond their years to raise their kids and their grandkids and the kids around them and be an influence like Eunice and Lois were to Timothy. God, help us. Our nation needs you. Our families need you. So, Lord, help our mothers be that influence. Help them be the ones that are praying for their kids and for their husbands. God, if anybody in here today doesn't know you as Savior, help them to realize that you loved the world so much, that Jesus loved the church so much that he gave his life for it. And help us, Lord, to place our trust and faith in you alone. Help us to live like it as we go out of here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The band's going to come back, and we're going to do one more song as we get ready for the offering. The kids will go by with the with the buckets for the building.